I'm ready to be trumped. We're good? Okay. Awesome. Thanks, team. Great job. Um, finally, we'll go to Dino Polska, our, our final team for the day, but certainly last but certainly not least. And so um, this is our our in the Eastern European team. Um, great to get to get them on. Um, so Tim, for your your team company, do you want to pull that up? Yeah. Introduce the team and oh, so yeah. can you see it? Yes. All right, awesome. All right, Natalia, go ahead. Okay. Hello everyone. Our team today will present our findings on Dina Polska, a supermarket retailer in Poland. Timothy is our team lead. Ta -da! You know him already. Natalia Grainy and Alexei were from Russia, but now we reside in Georgia, the country, not the state. Next slide, team. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Tim showing you the customer's video that he found, and he will walk you through the scoreboard. Tim? Awesome. Thank you. So as you all noticed, neither of us lives in Poland, but we think outside of the box in our primary research, and we found someone from a YouTube vlog, and we shot her a message, and then we became friends. She will show us how uh, what is Dino Store looks like. I hope the sound works. We can at least see it though, Tim. The sound doesn't work, but don't worry about it. We can see. Sorry, it. I'm enjoying the music myself. Then, yeah. Awesome. We scored Dino at 3.8, which is above the average score, and we recommend Dino as a buy. Currently, Dino market cap is at 441 billion slots and trading at 420 slots. Their PE ratio is 29.69, which is a lot higher than their competitors, and their earnings per share is at 14.33 slots. Our Three main investment theses are one, consistent growth. We discovered that Dino Polska's business model provides a consistent growth, consistent spendings and margins. The company consistently reinvests into opening more stores in rural areas and suburbs, which gives them the competitive advantage and leads them into the uh, stock price growth. The second one is mitigating risk. As the war in Ukraine continues, we expect that the market industry might have a hit due to inflation and supply chain disruption. However, in the past, Dino has been growing even during the war. We expect Dino will be ready to take the impact and continue to grow as they will naturally go. And the last one is competitive advantage. We believe that Dino's business model gives them a competitive advantage over its biggest competitors like Biedronka and Little. Although Dino is much a smaller store, it has a higher margins and growth um, compared to their competitors. We expect Dino to continue building the same format of stores and keep reinvesting and doing the same standardization to grow fast and efficiently. Dino Polska has demonstrated a successful business model focused on the key strengths. Prioritizing convenience with locally sourced fresh products, reinvesting profits to fuel store expansion and maintaining a robust stock price. To counter inflationary pressure, pressures, Dina is strategically limiting external finances. Financing has secured the land bank to facilitate a rapid store expansion at a rate of 350 to, five, to 500 stores per year. Capital, I'm sorry, after a two things extraction it's very difficult to speak capital you wanted to help you alexi you okay yeah it's painful to speak i'm sorry 
That's fine. So capitalizing on the strong customer demand, and despite of its smaller size uh, compared to major competitors, Dino is pretty stands out uh, with superior margins and growth rates, and it underscoring its com strong competitive position in the market. Our base assumption for 2024 expects a revenue growth of 29%. Considering the reckless uh, nature of the S&P 500 growth over the past 21 weeks, a uh, market correction expected soon uh, with a decrease in the price of Dino shares to 100 to even 200 weekly moving average, which will give a good entry point with potential price of growth to all-time high from 27% to 50%. We analyzed Dino has a pretty good potential in getting their addressable market. Their total addressable market is 10,500 stores. Just in Poland, currently they have 1,600 stores. However, in the longer term, it might increase due to international expansion, uh, which we haven't recognized so far. But in recent years, the market in grocery stores has been declining, and this might force them to lower their prices or to increase sales and find different strategies to retain their customers. The rural development program and tax break have helped Dino actually in leveraging their cost structure to be relatively low. And however, the federal legislation in Poland uh, might increase the interest rate and the enterprise, which will add another expense. Uh, currently Dino owns 4% 4 4 of the market share. Mm -hmm. Uh, as we already mentioned, Dina targets customers <laughs> in rural and suburban areas, which is 40% of the population. Dina's strategy is to open stores with 2,000 people living within 1.2 miles radius and 15-minute walking distance. This proves to be a good strategy as they have no other competitors in this niche. Because of that, Dina's customer retention rate in rural areas is 100%. Such strategic store placement highlights Dino's focus on maximizing customer value and understanding the value of long-term customer engagement. The customer lifetime value is 23.5 thousand slot based on a six-year lifespan. We calculated the lifespan to be six years because two-thirds of their stores were built in the last six years. Uh, the data in the table on the slide represents three quarters of 2023. According to Statista, 83% of Poles uh, shop in discounters such as Bidronka, 63 shop in hypermarkets like Carrefour or other hypermarkets, and 62 shop in supermarkets like Dina. We interviewed four people living in Poland and asked them about their experience with both Dina and Bidronka. Two of them live in rural areas and two are in urban areas. One urban resident had no experience with Dina and was very happy with the close by Bedronka. Another one had both Bedronka and Dina nearby and always goes to Dina to buy meat because it's tastier and of better quality. But for the rest of the groceries, he prefers Bedronka because of the prices and variety. Both rural area residents uh, see Dina as their main source of groceries. One rides his bike two kilometers to get to the closest store, which is Dino. Both have a positive attitude to Bidroka, but prefer shopping near the house to traveling. Uh, Dina doesn't have the same scale for multinational brands or even major Polish brands to match Bidroka's prices, but they work with smaller Polish brands. And from the February interview uh, with Dina that Benjamin shared, we found out that they go to Bidroka weekly to compare prices of 100 main products and match them, excluding weekly promotions. Dina is more about the main food staples, fresh fruits, breads, meats of good quality and price in the convenient location. Alex, are you good to go? Are you still hurt? No, okay. the plane right. strike. No worries. So the business model with Dino, adopted by the Dino Group, having a modern medium-sized supermarkets situated close to the customer's place of residence. And I, we think this is how that really contribute, contributes to the revenue drivers. And a fast-growing chain of stores increased sales in the current chain of stores and increased economic efficiency, efficiency at the level of an individual store increases a bit the margin due to relatively fixed costs, which grow more slowly than the revenue. And as we mentioned before, they are pretty rapid with their stores growth, but they limit themselves for external financing. 
Dina is managed by a three-person management board. All members have 20-year bottom-up careers with Dina. Tamas uh, Bernacci, you can see him at the top, is the founder and the main shareholder of Dina Polska. He owns 51% of the shares. So Tomas also owns a construction company whose only purpose is to build Dina stores, which gives Dina a fixed price per square meter. Compensation, 1% of the revenue, is used for employee salary, 7%, supervisory board compensation, 7%, and 84% goes to the managing board. Dina's salary for employees is lower compared to competitors, but at the same time, they offer jobs near people's houses, eliminating travel time which allows them to pay less in rural areas, but it affects employee satisfaction. Uh, the risks include market saturation in rural and suburban areas and the war in Ukraine. Bidronka started building smaller stores, but still in bigger cities. So far, Dina's management has been able to show a steady increase of EBITDA and net income despite the inflation and the war in Ukraine. They achieved it by reinvesting into the CapEx diversifying suppliers and building distribution centers, focusing on energy efficiency, their newest stores have solar panels, adjusting marketing and re uh, reassessing pricing, as I said. Our valuation says that this the company is between fair and undervalued. Our intrinsic value is a bit higher than its current price. Using the revenue multiple, EBITDA multiple, P multiple, DCF, PG method, and DCF EBITDA method, the median is at 460 slots. Based on the median, this company is undervalued. However, our DCF um, perpetual growth model is priced at 423 slots, stating that this company is properly priced. With its current price of 420 slots, we recommend buying this company. Thank you so much for your attention, and we're open to questions. Great job, guys. And Alexi, sorry about your tooth. But, yeah, sorry, uh, Alexi. Really well done. That's a bummer. All right, questions. We, what, we what are your, go ahead. General thoughts on the management team. If you look at the revenue growth, you know, with only 4% of the market, They've growing revenue of 30% annually. They're increasing operating margins and EBITDA margin. So the earnings uh, uh, potential here looks quite interesting. Uh, so it sounds like it's fairly valued from a multiple standpoint, at least if that's what I interpret your, your uh, football field chart evaluation. So what are your views on, can they sustain the future earnings growth that they've demonstrated over the last five years? Um, uh, or can they even take more share? So learning about this company and learning about their business model, they were able to achieve the goals that they've created, uh, they, they have. For example, in the, in the past three, th last year or two years, they, they said they didn't want to achieve 250 stores and they were able to achieve that. And that happens to a lot of the um, achievements they, they've had. So we would expect that they will naturally grow at their own current business model. Uh, we're, we're not, we don't see management as people, the, the, the people that, oh, we're going to make it a lot higher um, in, a, in a year, but they just being consistent with their business model after they PO, uh, IPO opens, they just keep opening or having earnings to go up uh, consistently. Mm -hmm. Can I add? So for the yeah. last six years, they started this new strategy expanding in rural areas and their management changed three years ago. And it's wonderful to see that they're steady and that their main goal, like they're growing with Dina. So they're very motivated to keep it steady and growing. And the potential of the market shows that right now they don't have competitors in the rural areas and they have the market to expand to. So we expect it to grow steadily um, if nothing major changes in the world. And taking to, into the account of risk with, with the war as well. So that's why we don't expect them to like aggressively moving in, in, in short term. Thank you. It looks compelling. Yeah, also I think we've 
we didn't mention that they own their meat production. Hmm. Which is another competitive advantage. So people in Poland, they prefer a fresher meat because be a drunk and little, they have to get from external or imp have to import from other places. But you know, they have their own meat processor and the Thomas Binarchi, who is the owner of Dino, also owns a construction company. So helping them to opening the stores they 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 want. Just as a follow up, because it looks like anytime you have your revenue growth is dependent upon new stores opening. It's always mm -hmm. helpful to look at same same store sales growth. So what are they doing with the how are they performing with the stores that have already been open for more than twelve months, and to see how they're doing because. As long as those stores continue to grow in margin, then that's a healthy base uh, because at some point, uh, most retail plays saturate and there's no more stores to open. And when that day comes, growth will slow significantly. And so then the question is what happens to the price multiple at that point in time? But at only 4% of the market, it seems like we're a ways away from that. Yes. So in five years, assumption or forecast they're still able to um growing consistently um because they still have a re relatively smaller market share and also and also they already consider to buy eZebra which is online drug store which has a market outside of Poland it's also in Germany and Ukraine and they already started to look in the future yeah. And and they announced the news to 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 buy Zebra at the end of March, but the March is not ended, so we don't know if there is a a deal or not. Yeah, they they had a comp a complication with the legislation, so they went to court. I think government didn't allow the deal, but they're still fighting for it. But to see that they're interested in expanding into e-commerce. It's good, like it shows that they're thinking about the ways to grow. Interestingly enough, I almost viewed that as a little bit of a red flag personally. Why? Because if their same store sales growth is as strong as it looks, and mm -hmm. if they're able to open organically all these new stores and to continue to take share, they shouldn't defocus. Mm -hmm. Once you start into something new, you immediately get distracted. There's issues. Yeah. And so to me, acquiring growth means they're starting to worry about their organic ability to open new stores. I could be wrong, but generally mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a concern. Yeah, it's thank you. It's a very good point. Uh, I agree. It's a like it would be good to investigate more. But I also consider that Bidronka has their own app, but Dina doesn't. So I think maybe they were thinking about like being present online and people, I know they use their stores in rural areas for postage. Like people uh, can go and pick up their post at the supermarket. So maybe they're just trying to be like- That would be more market. compelling. So if you can buy technology and push it through your existing distribution channel, that makes a lot yeah. more sense. Yeah. It's a good answer, Natalia. I was in uh I was in Czech Republic in December meeting with Dino and they gave that exact answer to <laughs> to Ben's question of getting distracted. So well done. Very well done. Any other questions? I know Benjamin's from Ethos side has done a ton of work. So I mean I'm interested to see whether he jumps in, but any others, any any questions? No, I would, I, I just say great job. Um, and Natalia, again, I just echo what James said, great job on answering that. Um, I, I, yeah. And it's also to think about, I mean, they bought their meat, uh, their meat processing is, is, is buying zebra. Is, is this a way that they can further integrate on the cosmetic side and, and bring that in um, as well? Um, I, I just wanted to say great job. Um, no questions, but I, I did have, uh, just a, I, I found a, a, an error in your guys' slide. I uh, just wanted to point out that the the founder, that's actually not the founder that you have his picture on there. Um, 
but don't don't feel bad because you're not the only ones. I think it's predominantly online. They have it's a past CEO that they had. He he retired okay. in 2020, and mm -hmm. for whatever reason, uh, the internet has decided that that's the founder. Um, and it's not him though. <laughs> so he's very much a recluse. Um, but yeah, that's that's the a former CEO. CEO so. Yeah, we didn't know that. <laughs> Sounds like the recluse founder may be perpetrating this image <laughs> to deflect <laughs> away from him. It, it, there, there, ben, there, there is uh, there's whole stories about it. He doesn't want his picture online. He's like yeah. the third wealthiest per person in Poland. Mm -hmm. He was in a he crashed his Ferrari like six years ago, took all pictures of himself off the internet. And so he's very sensitive about his picture and his online presence. Yeah, that's also some of the notes that we um, take as, as well from the management, uh, thanks to Benjamin, um, that the, the founder is trying to make himself private um, from the outer world. Um, so it's pretty hard to find the actual picture. And that's just the picture that came out with the internet. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, just, just to echo, I think, I'm interested in having sort of calls after a lot of these ones and giving feedback like we did last time, but continuing to dig on on a lot of these because I think you brought up a lot of points and I think we have a lot of questions. I think I think getting the store visits was brilliant. I loved the video. I loved the primary research, the channel checks, the you know, inside knowledge that you have, Alexia and Natalia on the region, on the buying patterns. And everything you passed on is sort of what we understood was the local feeling of better meat, fresher meat, convenience. Anyways, I, I think you just did some very good work, which um, a lot of us from the outside couldn't easily um, get a handle on. So very well done. Thank you. I know we're at time. Any comments, feedback from from this group um, on um, yeah, just quick quick feedback, or or do we need to quit, Isaac? Well, Isaac, can you stop the recording and then we can do feedback just so that we can be. Of course.